Good turnaround Tuesday, everybody. How you doing, Alexander, Paul, Brock? How are you guys? Marco, how's it going? Hugo? Let's take a look around here. Good. So uh, yields have tagged uh, the speed line again. Happened in a hurry from up here. So are we going to accelerate low Sinatra and have some type of throw over or are we going to get a bounce? Right now it looks like we're going to get a bounce for turnaround Tuesday, maybe yields head up, yeah. Pounds weak again, euro pound keeps exploding. This was a really nice trade from down here. Anyway, uh, I was going to buy a break. I'll still buy a break, but I'm not going to see 8540. It's going to probably have to be 86 ish, uh, 8580. Gold's trying to pop here. And look at the difference between the gold and silver chart. It's like night and day, isn't it? Look at that. So, like I said before, knowing where the gold silver ratio is going makes a big difference because if you're bullish metals um, or bearish metals and you shorted gold, you didn't get the payday. But if you were you were, were on the direction of the gold silver ratio, silver being the preferred short, you did pretty good. So we're at some support here. Um, trying to get a bounce, a little bounce in the S&Ps and NASDAQ today. Uh, NASDAQ's weaker, as you can tell by these two charts. S&P looks like it has more upside. It's up 0.3% compared to NASDAQ up 0.2. So a little weaker NASDAQ. Uh, the key for NASDAQ in the next few days, it's going to be if it could stay above the wedge line at 14.280 to 14.3, back inside the formation, there's problems. Um, you know, Russell to me looks like it broke down. I know some people that are still bullish this, but um, I think at first we have to close back over say 2.16 and 220 to arrest this correction. We have, you know, the 200 day coming in here. See what happens. I think this is the canary in the coal mine that's uh, chirping fairly loudly now. So uh, I want to bring in Ryan. Hi, Dale. Ryan. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Uh, uh, great to have your voice in the rotation in the mornings here on face. Uh, welcome you to be here anything yeah. catch your eye in the overnight european session that you want to yeah it's it started about? off this morning you know as if things were a bit steadying um you know yields had settled a bit uh, that sort of thing you know we're not you know yen had settled but it's it's starting to turn again you know us 10s got back above 120 percent, and i thought you know maybe we've had the little blowout you know we had the lows yesterday and and now things are going to settle but we're back below again it's not as volatile as uh, yesterday thus far, but it, it is continuing this this trend. And the yen was was reacting a bit this morning, uh, and that's that's stays a little bounced. Uh, Euro yen, that's you know that's seen a low down in one twenty eight, you know just below one twenty eight ninety, and it's back up again one twenty nines. Similar for guppy. Um, so as I say, yeah, it's it's not as explosive as yesterday but the theme seat still seems to be there so it's a question of you know are we in dead cat bounce territory at the moment um the pound obviously is uh, looking soggy as, as you just mentioned yeah real soft uh, euro pound really making a nice move any comments on uh, euro pound with what it's yeah i'm, I'm sure this hours. one from way above i'm sure this one from way above and i, I was i've been playing the, the last couple of weeks sort of the 86 handle um, you know, shorts and, and letting them off, you know, anywhere down sub 85, 70 odd. Um, but that cleaned out when it, when it took over 25, 86, 25, 30. Um, we got some levels in the way up here, I think 50, around 50, 60, 70, 80. But the, the big one or the bigger one to me 
uh, which is still fairly short term level was around sort of 87 87 20 um get over that and we've potentially got a got a change but cable's got the 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 big big level at 130 like at 135 i've I've just posted in the room it's uh, a massive level down there it was it's it's been a big historical level um you know you look on the the weekly or monthly charts it was a big big level over brexit um okay. you know it's 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 really right a doozy right want to keep in mind the side the yeah side. you know right. even okay. further back you look at it back through brexit 2016 earlier you know okay. it's a big big level um, okay. and, and those are the ones we'd like to, to look at and good morning ryan how are you yeah hi blake how you doing good good and good morning dale Hey, how are you, Blake? Uh, nice to have a British accent uh, in the rotation. What do you, think? you know, it always sounds a lot better than uh, us American accents, whatever those even sound like uh, to everybody else. But uh, I, I want to say, you know, I just wanted to mention, you know, one of the things about the, the sterling is it's actually trading below, um, you know, it's trading below the 200-day moving average. It's a big, you know, this is a big, uh, big level of support here around the 136.50 level it's it, it, it was the previous lows we, we were setting up a long-term double top i know we've been talking a lot about it the last few weeks um and now we're you know we're we're, we're obviously stopping out anybody who's long currently like anybody over the last you know couple of days maybe to the last couple of weeks thinking they want to play it off the support they're all getting stopped out now but i would venture to guess that the, the close this week is going to be pretty important to anybody who's trading the sterling. What do you, what do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I think, I think that's the case. I think, I think this, this 136 handle could be quite important as well. You know, I mentioned 135, but yeah. when you're talking in a, in a wider context, you know, these big, huge levels, um, if, if we finish, well, particularly if we finish below 137, 137, 136, 60. If we hold below there this week, that's that's a bearish signal for me. Um, I mean, I was trying longs yesterday uh, off the 137 and, and that 136, 70, limited success. Um, I was letting a bit out, then I got stopped overnight. Yep. Um, you know, the old uh, catching a falling knife trick. Um, but the hold below there looks important at the moment, below yeah. that 137, 136, 60. Yeah, and I, and I just pulled up the charts really quick so you guys can see. This is a, you know, this is a big, there's your double top. These are really key levels of support from, you know, earlier this year. And now we're breaking below that support. Now, as I, as I had mentioned just a moment ago, here's the 200-day moving average. And we closed below it yesterday. We are trading below it right now. So when I say that this is going to be a big level this week, I mean, if, if for some reason, I'm just going to throw this out there, uh, let's say stocks rally to new highs, and I know a lot of you right now are thinking, there's no way that's going to happen, Blake. No way. Well, let's say stocks close at a new high or at highs of the week. Do you think that the sterling's going to you know, trade back above 136.50 you know, and, 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 and give us a little false breakdown? I think that's entirely possible. So you know, it, there's a lot of week left in this week. There's a lot of daylight left in just today alone especially in north american trade before you know before we we head into asia and a whole new day so just keep in mind right now the markets are they're live they're open they're probing stops they're you know they're they're, they're getting people in and out and uh, where we close today i think is going to be really important where we close this week is going to be really important for the sterling and uh, and um you know from from you know the way that ryan is talking about this as well. This, these are really important levels, aren't they? Going back to Brexit. Yeah, yeah exactly. You, you know, take it right the way back, stick a line in at 135. You can see it, you know, going all the way back. Um, Here we go. Yeah, you can probably take it, it take it all the way back to there. Yeah, yep. I think I've got that on my, on my chart. You know, it's, yep. it's, a, it's one of those big levels that, that you know, when, when something's going on, you take note of it. But, you know, it's 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 easy to, to look at it. You know, cable's a bit of a wild beast. Sitting here right now, I'm I'm setting my sights at 135 and at 137. That's that's those are my markers. You know, if we get back above 137, that takes the pressure off. If we don't, we're likely to get a test of 135 more often than not. Um, and what happens there is is going to be important. I'll, I'll be tempted for a long uh, into that. You know, maybe from about. 135, 20, even maybe down 15, 10 um, for a first time test at least um, and see what we go. 
see what happens. But um, if, if we don't bounce, if we get down there, test it, bounce, but don't bounce very far, then I'm going to be looking at placing some some stops below it, um, some sell stops just to revert into a short if it should break. Um, but that's a good way to play it with with sell stops, which means you don't you're not in a trade and you're waiting for it to break, um, and that gets you in a trade. Or you can wait for it to break and then wait for a confirmation of of one thirty five become resistant, and then you get in that way. Awesome. Well, those are some great ideas, Ryan. And you know what? I'm, I'm really excited about having you here this morning. And um, I, I'm going to bring in Stellius and Steve here in a second. I just want to refer to a couple other charts that, that really have my attention. And, you know, these are the types of things, if you guys aren't normally listening here, this is, these are the types of things that we talk about uh, every day. It's free, the phase webinar that you're listening to. Uh, I, I want to I take us back over to the euro. You know, the euro's at a very, very important level of support. This is the big triangle support we've been talking about. Notice that we're, we're actually developing a wedge. The probes yesterday down to the 117.65 level, you know, uh, I warned you yesterday at this time, I'm like, hey, look, we could get a pop right back above uh, 118. And we, we, you know, push back to 118.20. So we're, this is very much a consolidation. That doesn't mean that we won't break today probably waiting more for the ECB, but just keep in mind that we we are really sitting on key support and we are in a wedge. And so the the amount of volatility you see when you're in the apex of a wedge is, it tends to be a little higher and it tends to be very, very unpredictable. So just be really careful. You know, we could obviously go in any direction here. One of the other things I wanted to um, point out is we've been really bullish um, the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona, and this currency pair has treated me really well over the last month. Um, we are nearing a cup and handle pattern completion, 161% uh, extension of the last um, the last move, which would be this would be this move right here of the the cup, 161% extension. Also. A 618 retracement on a daily chart from the uh, November 2020 highs to today. So that that means that basically there's a confluence at 9.05. I've been expecting a move to 9.05. We are basically here now. So you got to keep that in mind because you know these are the types of things. These are the kind of currencies especially Norway, uh, it will continue to go higher if we get risk off, if we see stocks come down. But if stocks bounce today for whatever reason, then you know we're gonna get a little bit of a pullback here, maybe a consolidation before we continue to race higher. Speaking of which, one last chart I wanna bring to your attention. I know a lot of people are, you know, Dale was referencing all of the other different markets, you know, the Russell, uh, the NASDAQ, I'm going to take your attention just to the S&P really quick. This is very, very key support. You can see it right here. It's at the, the uh, 4250 level. We talked a lot about it yesterday. Uh, we actually closed back above 4260 at the end of the day yesterday. And, you know, yes, we're up another, you know, 20 points after that. Right now, the market is flirting with a very big breakdown point. You know, obviously, if we break below yesterday's lows, I wouldn't want to be long any type of risk at all. Um, but at this point, we have to be cognizant of the wedge still holding. So really important levels of support. The market's really kind of consolidating around here. And I think it's very pivotal. And uh, hopefully by the end of the week, we're going to have a, a, a good idea of which way the market is going to break. Now, um, we, as, as, as some of you have seen via Twitter, uh, some of you have uh, heard me on the week ahead video this last week, and uh, hopefully an email went out to the Forex Analytics um, you know, uh, folks that we have a big announcement uh, that we wanted to make today here on this webinar. So I just want to make sure my colleagues, Steve and Stelios, so are you guys here? Of course. All right. Good morning, yeah. Stel. Good morning. I don't know if Steve good is around. He's popping in there and out. Is. Steve, are you here? I am, ma'am. Hey, good morning, Steve. How are good you? Good morning. Good morning. And then morning, uh, we have Dale here. I'm here. And then it just so happens that we have Ryan Littlestone here of Forex Flow. Yep, yeah, yeah. Good morning, Ryan. All right. So, hey, guys, um, Stelios, Steve, 
pretty exciting day today, right? What's the news? Very exciting. <laughs> well, the Fed, uh, asked, Jay Paul, Jay Paul is joining the team. He, he's joining you for the base webinar in 15 <laughs> minutes. We will have right. <laughs> just kidding. No, I'll um, grill the guy, man. Uh, you know, I, hey, I'm, I, I just want to say, um, you know, I, I'm really happy to announce that uh, as of today, um, the Forex Flow Live uh, folks will uh, be um, joining together, joining forces with the Forex Analytics folks. So together, we are going to uh, to to be um, tackling the uh, Forex market uh, as as a as a as a bigger team, and we're joining forces. So uh, we are really excited to have Ryan part uh you know of 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 our you know daily routine here at the uh here at the webinars i think he's going to be able to provide a lot of um him and his team will provide a lot of uh light to to our traders um you know what's happened in europe you know i had mentioned this to you ryan that uh over the, especially over the last couple of years because a couple of years ago i figured out finally after 12 years of, years of using Twitter, I, I figured out how to set up an alarm on my Twitter profile so I could get notified uh, when people tweeted things. And there was three, three organizations that I got alert, alerts from, and you happen to be one of them because I think the way that you break down data and what's happening in the markets is second to none. And I am so excited to have your knowledge and your team um, joining forces with us together, so uh, so we can provide your analysis to to our current uh, users and and vice versa. So welcome to the Forex Analytics team. Welcome. Yeah, Ryan. thanks a lot. Hey. Thanks, guys. Uh, it's it's an absolute pleasure. You know, we've been talking for for a fair while. You know, probably a couple of years, just on and off, sort of virtually on Twitter yes. and whatever, and. Uh, you know, I think we, we both share the same ideas of, of how how to best provide services for forex traders. You know, it's a it's a tough world out there. You know, it's it's not all bags of money, yachts, and you know, fancy cars. The majority of people who, who trade full time or trade part time are doing it for some extra money or doing it for their for their full time income. And you know, we're paying bills as much as anyone else. So to be able to, you know, properly provide traders with the right information, the right knowledge, and not just our trades. Um, it's not all about what I'm trading. What I try and, and, and show is how I'm trading. Um, you know, I can tell you, I think cables going up, cables going down, whatever levels, but it's how you trade it. You know, what what's what's the same between all, all the good traders? It's not what they trade, it's how they trade. You know, you and me can have different opinions on a, on a currency, but you're going to trade it and you're going to manage your risk the same way as I am. And that's what I think the good thing is here is that, that I've been doing that on, on my side. You guys do that, a lot of that in your size, your side. And it, you know, it made an awful lot of sense to come together and uh, work as one rather than doing it separately. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's, you know, it's, it's super exciting to have you here because I, I want to show everybody just to give you an example, a little, little bit of flavor of what it looks like as a Forex analytics, Forex flow subscriber, just, you know, obviously if, if you're with, if you've been with Forex flow live, uh, we've tried to accommodate and, and bring as much of uh, Ryan and his team's tools into our fold where we have all the market information that you can see here from, uh, the, from Ryan about, you know, uh, options and order updates and flow that has come through the market. Uh, we have that built in right into our platform now. Um, also, uh, we have um, we've incorporated in with uh, our rooms, and you can see here. This is our our chat rooms. We have our general room. We have uh, a room where people are talking about their trades and exactly what they're you know buying and selling. Here's the general chat um, where we you know we we talk about obviously what's moving in the markets and what we're thinking. But this is where we're actually kind of placing our trades. We got news and research where you can upload. Um, you know, obviously links, you can upload, you know, research files, um, you know, you can see, you can get, uh, you know, current research from, from different banks, um, you know, that have been uploaded. Uh, and these are things that, you know, you can see that, uh, you know, I, I, I uploaded last night and, you know, every, every, anybody can do that. And um, generally speaking, we just have a community of, and you can see this is, I'll just give you an example 
Um, I got up uh, about an hour and a half ago and um, I popped in somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. And you can see how active our chat room has been. This is just the general chat, not including the, this is just the hour, last hour and a half. So it's, it's obviously we've got a lot of interactions happening in our chat rooms. And um, that's uh, a, a product of having a really good community. It's a safe community. I, I, I've always, and I know with my colleagues, Steve and Stelios, we've always felt that we wanted to offer a safe place for people to come. They're not going to be sold, you know, um, you know, some, some sort of this and that and the other thing they're, you know, they're not going to get, you know, pitched, you know, we just toss people out, you know, no one talks about religion and, and politics. We just talk about the markets and when things aren't moving, we joke around a little bit and we're more of a family in there than anything. So, um, so anyway, I just, uh, I, I'm so excited to have Ryan's group in here because, you know, we, we've actually, they brought in a lot of, um, nice features that, uh, that we have incorporated into the Forex analytics uh, offering as well, which, um, you know, is going to be great. And it's, uh, you know, we just turned it on actually, I think a couple of days ago. So um, Stelios, uh, yep. let's, let's hear what you have to say ab ab about uh, everything that's happening with the uh, Forex flow, Forex analytics. Yeah. I want to echo your um, sentiment. Basically, I think the Forex flow live service complements ours really well. And Ryan is a really nice guy. So, you know, having Steve around, who's a, not a nice guy, it's a really nice balance. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'm very, you know, we're, we're all obviously really happy to have a Ryan and, uh, you know, looking forward to, um, to the future. And yeah, you know, uh, that's, um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> hey, I, that, well, um, Steve, Cheers, do you yeah. have it? Uh, Steve, what, what would you like to say uh, regarding uh, everything? I know Steve's been working under uh, uh, behind the scenes. He's like the, you know, uh, dealing with the technology guys and the developers. Um, other than, you know, your head spinning a little bit, Steve, anything you'd like to mention here? It's nice to be balanced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we no, guys, were... I don't have anything to add that you haven't already said. Okay. All right. Well, you know, Ryan, I, I just want to say that uh, that it's really nice to have you here. And we're going to, Ryan's going to be a more of a normal staple uh, on our face webinar. You know, he is just so you guys know, I, I, I learned of Ryan years ago, probably about, what is it? I guess five, six years ago when you started working with Forex Live. Yeah, that's, uh, I started that oh, so nearly 10 years ago now, I think when I started up there. Gosh, it was 10 years ago. It's been, yeah. sometimes I, I know it's like you, you, you know, snap your fingers, you look at your kids and you're like, well, when the, when did that happen? As I was uh, hanging out with my 17 year old kid last night. Um, anyway, uh, I can't believe it's been 10 years. So I originally learned in the, the, one of the reasons why I know Ryan's name specifically is he worked with Adam Button over at Forex Live for, I guess it was probably 10 years ago. And um, that's why when you, ran off to do your own thing with uh, Forex Flow. I immediately followed you. I immediately, you know, always loved your work. And like I said, I've been following your work ever, ever since the, the, the day I first read your first column on Forex Live about 10 years ago. And um, I've had the utmost respect for you. I'm so excited to bring your knowledge and your team, by the way, I, I, I have so much respect for the team that you're working with. Um, so excited to have everybody involved and, and for your knowledge to be, you know, to, to be given to our Forex analytics community. It's just going to be, a, you know, huge. And I know, I hope your Forex, and Forex flow people enjoy the technology and the knowledge we bring as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will. Um, you know, they're going to come over, they're going to set in, you know, the, you can say chat rooms, all chat rooms are the same, but they're, they're not. It's, it's all about the people you put in there. And uh, you know you got a you got a you got a much bigger group than, than what we have here, so it's going to be maybe a bit of a shock for for my guys, um, you know, coming into so many comments in in the room. But you know that's that's what a community is all about, and, and and that's the good thing. Yeah, you know, some of these guys, like you take Amir. Many many of you have heard Amir's story over the years. Uh, Amir, I've known for probably about fifteen year, maybe sixteen years, 
there's some people that I've been chatting with for about 15 years that are still in our chat rooms today. So that, you know, that have been uh, uh, around there like Benedict and, you know, even the, the irises and Janes of the world have been, Raj have been around for you know, years. So it's, uh, it's good and same with Simon. So anyway, we, we have a really nice, uh, really nice community. Hope to have you guys part of this community now. Before Dale, you, you jump over and take over uh, the, um, the webinar again and, uh, and, 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 and bring on your guest for today. I wanna mention that, you know, guys, this is uh, for us, it's a big deal. And it's a big deal because we've been working on this for a long time and we feel that we're, our footprint with Forex Analytics, now with Forex Flow, is getting bigger in the, in the, in the currency community just as we feel that volatility is gonna start rising here in the FX market, you know, with uh, you, you can see volatility starting to pick up in the dollar and in currencies, and hopefully that's going to continue. And we hope to, to continue to make an impact in the markets uh, here. And so we want you to be part of that as well. And um, we haven't offered a pricing discount um, for months. Uh, matter of fact, um, I want to say since the beginning of the year, uh, Steve Stelius, you guys probably helped me out with that, but I know that think, is correct. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, if you guys, you guys come around and you're like, oh, I want to, I want to, um, you know, I want to join you guys, uh, you know, on Forex analytics. And you're like, but, you know, when, when am I going to get a discounted amount? Well, starting today, you're going to be able to buy one month, get one month free and get up to 25% discount uh, on your annual subscriptions. Um, and that goes into effect. We'll probably keep it into effect for the next um few days to maybe a week or so to give you guys an opportunity to uh, take advantage of having, you know, what used to be two organizations merged into one. Uh, you're basically getting the both of best, uh, be best of both worlds is what I meant to say. Sorry, it's still early in the morning here. Um, so make sure you, you come by, um, you know, jump in our community, uh, take advantage of our special pricing that will be, it'll be um, lit up probably within the next hour. So when you go over to pricing, you're going to see all the special prices right now. It's only, you know, the, um, uh, $1 trial, but that $1 trial will go away when we, uh, when we offer our special pricing, make sure you download the mobile app so you can, you can access everything, um, via your mobile devices. So you're getting alarms when, you know, new, new, uh, uh patterns in play are enacted. Um, when, you know, support and res resistance levels are breached, when new analysis is updated, you get notified via um, uh, your mobile device. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in the community. So Ryan, welcome to the team. Any last things that you, you any last uh, comments you'd like to make to uh, the Forex Analytics community that's here every day listening to these free face webinars? Yeah, you know, I, I hope to carry on being a part of them. You know, you hear my voice more often. Um, unless you vote me down in the comments, uh, you know, yeah, you hear plenty from me. And, you know, as I said earlier, my, my role, the, the, one of the reasons I, I set up the, the chat room in the first place was um, we had some education courses going on at, at Forex Live. And I wanted just to give that additional support to traders because it's all right putting traders through courses and stuff. And then, you know, you send them packing in and you don't speak to them again. This was a way to keep traders, you know, learning, and that's what I want to do. But it's a bit selfish as well because I'm an I'm an old trader from the from the city, and I want that community as well. You know, it's it's lonely sitting here on your desk sometimes on your own, and you know, being part of a community, bouncing ideas off. That's uh, that's a good thing for me. So from a selfish perspective, uh, that's why I do it. But as I say, it's here to uh, to help you guys and help the, the less experienced traders among you. And can well, I just say, are... I really, I really liked you in movies like Snatch and The Transporter. Really <laughs> 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 well, here we go. Here we go. That's funny. All right. Have you looked well, at the movie lately, mate? <laughs> well, Ryan, um, welcome to our family. Forex Flow Analytics. Yeah, Forex Flow Analytics. There we go. <laughs> welcome to welcome to our community. We're really excited to have you here, and uh, I know everybody listening in the morning. You know, it's one thing when you hear from me uh, and and I'm like, I'm just catching like when I when I get up and I'm, I, you know, we're broadcasting and you hear my voice and I'm like, yeah, what happened in Europe overnight? Is this that? And it's just what I'm reading. But, you know, when you hear from, you know, 
traders like Stelios, when you hear from Ryan, when you hear from Steve, look, they were looking at the markets as, you know, you know, Sterling was pushing the support or, you know, the, the, the dollar yen, you know, knocked out all the stops above 110 or whatever the case may be. And it's, it's really good to hear, you know, they were there when, you know, the, the, the headlines hit and saw the price action where, you know, me, I'm like, I just, I just know what I read. So it's always nice to get, you know, that, that boots on the ground view of what's happening um, as it's happening. So uh, we're, we're so excited to have you part of our team. So welcome. Welcome, Ryan. Yeah, yeah Welcome, thanks, guys. Ryan. All right, and Ryan, we're gonna see you. We're gonna see you here uh, normally. So you guys are gonna start hearing uh, Ryan and his voice. Um, you know, we won't keep him here for half an hour every day, but we'll we'll be getting some updates from him. So uh, welcome to the team. Guys, don't forget, take advantage of the Forex Analytics pricing. We're only going to keep it on for like literally uh, about uh, a week, week and a half. I don't know. We're, we're, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, but we don't keep them up very long. If you've, if you've been around us for the last five years, you know, we put on a, a special and then it's gone and you won't see it again for quite some time. And it's been five, six months since you've got any pricing discounts. So uh, take advantage of it while it's here. Uh, we'll have that up for you later today. Um, buy one month, get one month free, and then up to 25% discount for the annual subscriptions. And uh, that's it. So Dale, have a great interview. Welcome, you, Ryan. We're super excited about having you. And um, yeah, I'll uh, see you guys on the face webinar, or excuse me, on the morning edge in 45 minutes, which is an exclusive webinar for only Forex Analytics subscribers. We will tackle all the major currencies and the indices and develop our bias chart. So I'll see you guys there. Cheers, guys. Good hunting today, Blake. And uh, Ryan, welcome aboard. Put on your life jacket. Yeah, thanks, mate. I've got it here. All right, buddy. Board, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Cheers, Dave, mate. welcome back. Welcome back to Face, Dave. How are you? Looking forward to uh, seeing what's on your radar, what you're thinking here. Sure. Well, Good Dave, morning to everybody. How is everyone doing today? Good. Oh, you're on a day where we have a, a, a merger mania Tuesday. And uh, uh, great to have you back, Dave. Uh, it's been a while. So if you want to share your screen, it's the there you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, metals are on your mind. Yeah, absolutely. And Dale, thank you so much for bringing me back on. I really appreciate the time. And I feel like I'm among legends. Uh, you guys are very, very good at what you do. And I'm learning even in the couple of minutes that I'm on, on these mornings, I'm learning a lot. Oh, well, thank in, you very much. Uh, you know, that's our mission uh, to build up and edify traders every day. So, uh, and that's why we bring in guys like you. We learn from everyone, Dave. So um, I see your page there and, and now you're featuring the Kiwi. Uh, dollar's been fairly strong. Uh, tell us what you're, thinking uh we had a couple of days of down in equities uh wondering what you're thinking there and really across the board that you're looking at with your quote so sure absolutely just just to give the folks a general context of how i approach things is i look at things from a longer term perspective not necessarily on the hourly or the uh, or the minute by, by minute chart which a lot of the forex guys do i look at things from a week crazy perspective. Yeah, They're going to burn perspective, out. Daily perspective, et cetera. And I try to give myself context to the trades that I make based on what's going on longer term. So what I'm looking at right now, the, the biggest thing on my mind is, is the long term or the 10-year interest rate here and how okay. it impacts how it impacts uh, basically all the various different Everything. industries. Right. If the 10 year is going too high, too fast, then uh, large cap tech is getting smoked and tech in general. On the other hand, if it's going lower than markets are expecting, then, then you're seeing commodities getting smoked. And, and really, that's what we've had this year so far. Q1 was interest rates were rising pretty rapidly here. Uh, they, they really broke out uh, around February and then they rallied all the way to you know, 1.76 on the 10 year. And then, and, and then that's, that's when commodities really took off. And then since then, it's been a bloodbath on, in many of the commodity names. You know, I've been following uranium and precious that's metal, right. uh, copper. They've all been hit. And frankly, it's not such a big surprise when you look at some of the charts. Uh, there's, there's been, and, and this is actually uh, small caps. 
uh, and microcaps as well as commodities have all had negative divergences uh, since since roughly February. So price had been going higher, yet momentum yeah. had been dropping. Um, and so it was a question of time when that actually the rug would actually get pulled. So the question is, wh- where do we go from here? Right. That's that's really what we want to know. So, so uh, uranium down from the highs by how much? 10 percent, 15 percent uranium well, itself. The, the, the price of uranium actually is, is basically flat on the year. It's it's about thirty two dollars a pound right now, which is higher today than it was when it started. 2021, which is I what was the high of the move, Dave, uh, before we dropped to 32? Where were we at? Well, well so here's the thing uh, the price of uranium this year, the high was only $33 a pound. So it hasn't okay. dropped that much at all. But the equities, underlying equities, had been so bullish expecting the price of uranium to, to go above 40 and, and, and higher. Many of them traded at valuations with, with those expectations. And when those expectations weren't met on the time frame that uh, many participants wanted them to, to be met. Uh, down came the sell-off, and then you had the frothiness. Uh, the momentum traders left the trade, and then you had um, basically you have a panic going on right now in the sector, and um, which presents some tremendous opportunities from the peak to trough right now. Assuming we're at the trough, nobody knows until after the fact. But yeah. peak to trough, the average uranium name that I'm following is down anywhere between 30 and 50 percent. So, so there is a huge potential opportunity if you have the long-term conviction and bullish thesis that I do to to be accumulating, and that's precisely what we're doing with whatever dry powder we have. Because I think this, we'll be having this conversation, Dale, hopefully in a couple months, and if so, I think uranium is going to be above 40 dollars a pound, and so there's a huge opportunity. Um, Sprott Resources, I'm not sure if you're familiar with those guys, oh, yeah. biggest resource player. They just came into the uranium sector and um, took over the, the management of Uranium Participation Corp. Or they they can buy pounds at the money um, with, oh. with, with, their, with their ticker. <clears throat> so they, they went live yesterday. And so I think that's going to produce a major, major just momentum shift back in the positive for uranium. But that you know, being said, I, you know, uranium uh, is not the only uh, physical market that's uh, the shares have underperformed the commodity itself. Uh, it, it was happening in gold and silver. The metals were going up mm-hmm. and the miners were not. They were eroding. Um, and uh, so uh, oils, a uh, similar thing with that huge move up until the break we had yeah. in energy. Uh, oils were underperforming. Uh, the oil shares were underperforming oil. So it's been happening across the board and kind of reinforces that uh, I, I think what you'd want to see is uh, a little break in uranium and the stocks stop going down and starting to lead the way I was always taught that uh, your most bullish setup is the miners outperforming the underlying commodity rather than yes. the other way around. Absolutely. And that's what I'm looking for. I, I have a hunch yesterday may have been the day uh, that the bottom uh, might might be marked. We'll see. I might have okay. to back test it. But I think it all relates to interest rates here. So when I'm looking at the 10-year treasury here on the daily chart, um, notice yeah. notice what's happening. We had this uptrend since August, then we busted yeah. out in February, had kind of this rounding top, and now we broke down to the base in February, and we kind of overshot that gap. But notice right here um, is that momentum, even though it's very oversold at, at 29 on the RSI, is all the way back to March 2020 levels. And you're going to see that theme across the board. So I, I have a hunch that uh, treasuries have bottomed here and likely are going to start their uptrend. Okay. When you look at small caps, um, small caps also, this is the weekly chart. So all the way back to, to March. So we've overshot, we've overshot the 50 RSI to the downside. But I have a, I have a hunch that we've, we've possibly hit the lows. They're very close to it. Can't say for sure. But if you look at the daily chart on the um, on the small cap index, notice where RSI is exactly the same 
level that the the tenured uh, treasury is on the daily. Uh, in other words, back to the March 2020 lows. So whereas a lot of folks are talking about a potential breakdown in, in, in small caps and commodities and, um, and move back into deflation, that very well may be the case. I have a hunch though, that we've, we've, we're bottoming here in the small caps. What I've been looking for Dale over the last couple of weeks in, in the sell off in small caps is when do small caps start outperforming the large caps? And we started okay. seeing it over the last couple of days and uh, in some of the shorter term uh, trading. And so uh, yesterday was the first time on a, on a daily close that it, that it happened. And, and I have a hunch that it's going to start, um, that trend's going to start reversing to the upside. Now, if I'm wrong, it's possible that we do fill this gap here uh, on, a, on a dip lower. Um, but, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. If small caps, if you look at some of the underlying small caps, they're down, you know, 30 Thirty percent from the highs, uh, and so. Well, even the Russell two thousand is down ten percent. Exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it hasn't made a new high since the end of March. It's one of the only indices not to make a new high. Right, and it's been a, in a technical downtrend since, or in a momentum downtrend since February. So the question is, when do we bottom? You know, a lot of folks are starting to talk about, and uh, now is the time when the markets are going to have a, a major sell-off. Um, maybe, but I, I don't see it because I think the underlying sell-off has already taken place. Most of the names in the S&P are down on the year, uh, even as the S&P has done quite well, right, with the mega, mega caps. Small caps with many of the names down 30, 50 percent. Um, there's been a rotation underneath the surface where the higher quality names have, have withstood the, the negative downturn. But for the most part, the lesser quality names have gone down. And so the question is, perhaps now that trend is reversing the other way. And that's kind of what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of healthy price action within, within the general equity markets. And, and now you've got earnings seasons coming, coming in, and I expect that to be very strong. And, um, and if that's the case, I just I don't see a scenario where the markets have a heavy pullback. 3 to 5% possible always. And, uh, but we've already seen a 4% pullback on the S&P and the NASDAQ, 10% on emerging markets and small caps. So the question is, are we done? I'll tell you, I'll tell you next time. But that's, that's okay. kind of how I'm, I'm saying things. All right. Okay. So yeah. um, uh, let me ask you this, since you started with yields. So uh, the uranium and commodity stocks do better when yields are rising. Correct. Or falling. Because uh, I thought lower yields actually create more of an opportunity, less, less opportunity cost for buying something that doesn't have a yield. Right, look, there, there are a lot of factors that come into play and perhaps what you're saying is, is true in the long haul, but in the yeah. short haul, yeah. uh, yields are a reflection of what uh, people's expectations of, of the economy and inflation and so on. And so uh, the 10 year has been a reflection of the, the debate of transitory versus permanent inflation. And yeah. if, if things are indeed are transitory, then perhaps demand is not as strong, perhaps growth is not as strong and given all the stimulus and therefore that's given those expectations, the general materials, the, the, the more industrial portions of the economy have been pulling back. Um, but I don't believe it's transitory. And um, I think you're gonna see a bigger push towards inflation into the end of the year, into 2022. And this has just been a healthy pullback. Okay, uh, why, that, why Shanghai? Because uh, uh, China is a major buyer of commodities. Is that what you know? You keep an eye so on this it? is this is a great question. I don't have a clear answer, but I've been watching this Shanghai index for a long time. If you notice the rounded bottom, this is a chart since 2015. It's a rounded parabola, and um, and if you look, we're completely at the apex here. And the question is, what, what, what Shanghai does here, I think, will, will be very, very critical to the rest of the global equity markets. If we break out, and I think the probability is quite high that we do, um, I think you're going to see a major move higher in, in not only equity names, but led by emerging markets. And, and emerging markets are very correlated to commodities as well and the inflation cycle. And frankly, a weaker, do a weaker dollar. So I know uh, uh, some of the shorter term charts, the dollar is looking quite good right now. It's, it's been hitting some of the commodities, but I'm, this, is the, this is the chart that I'm watching and we're, we've got 
very little to move to maneuver here. Either we break out or we break down. And I think this is going to determine the next 12 months of equity flows. Okay. All right. Uh, interesting. Uh, did uh, uh, When China announced it was selling commodities, trying to break commodities, uh, maybe we could take a look at what an, a uranium chart. Oh, you're going to pull it up now? A uranium chart? Mm -hmm. Or a uranium issue? Okay. Yeah, so this is oh. uranium issue. Okay. Yeah, so if you see here the URA, which is largely composed of the large caps, but it's got a lot of the, the micro caps in here as well. Um, but this is heavily influenced by, you know, the Cameco's and the Kazata problems of the world. But notice what was happening as the price was going up in 2021, higher highs, momentum kept making lower yeah. highs. And then eventually it, bro it broke down. Um, but this is how we trend. And so now we've been in a downtrend since um, basically the middle of June, according to the URA. Uh, most stocks have been down um, earlier than that. And I think we're approaching this 18 level of support. Whether or not we hit it, I don't know. But we've, uh, for most stocks uh, in, within the sector, they've breached their 200 daily moving averages and, that I've, and, and are down over 40%. So, um, when I when I say most stocks, I'm talking about more of the micro caps, the the juniors, not not the not the majors. But bottom line is, I think there's an opportunity here to to accumulate quality names, and um, and that's what we're doing. Okay. Next. Yeah, another interesting another interesting chart here is Glencore. Glencore is basically one of, one of the major players in the commodity space. And uh, they, they've also sold off since, since roughly May of this year. And I think we're coming in at support around that seven, 790 level. Notice our size back to the 50 level, which is where the previous breakout occurred back in November. And, and that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. So if this is indeed, if this is indeed the, the end of the sell-off, then we're going to have a really uh, bullish uh, second half of 2021 for the commodities, but in general, towards equity, towards value, towards industrials, uh, the financial sector, I think is going to do well on, under a higher interest rate environment. What's, so the, I, uh, what's a commodity that Glencore mainly mines? Is it copper? It's copper and I think it's iron ore. Not a hundred percent sure, but I think iron ore is the primary and then there's copper um, okay. certainly fine as well. So okay. it, we, we had kind of a double top here from 2018, um, but I, so I needed a while to kind of consolidate gains. Um, and I think that's what we're doing right now. And uh, are, you, the, are you familiar with Denison Mines? One of our attendees is asking. Absolutely. DNN. I've okay. been following Denison very, very closely. And um, it's, it's been hit. So let me see if I, well, in the interest of time, I'm not going to uh, find another chart. But Denison here right now is interestingly um, back to, so what I, my charting methodology is I look where momentum was on the previous breakout. So if you go down all the way to this November, December, when we broke out um, back in 2020 from about 40 cents around these levels, yeah. um, RSI was around these levels, uh, which is around 40, 44. We're back to that level right now. So I would not be surprised. In fact, I think there's a high probability that we're bottoming here. Now, can we dip lower? I think that the 200 day moving average is around 85, 86 right now. Can we dip lower if there's another market flush? Sure we can um, towards this level. But I think we're in the, in the, in the last, last tranche of the sell-off. And, and I think we're going to see a rally over the next couple of days. I, I, I noticed that this stock is being shorted right now, and a lot of algorithmic trading is, is keeping it down. Um, but when, when that covers and when the trend reverses to the upside, I think Denison is going to be one of the best performing miners. I personally don't like it as much relative to some of the other names due to its high dilution and so on. But as a barometer on the general uranium space, this, this chart is basically what's been happening in the sector. So from a high of 150, we've had uh, about seven straight weeks of down price action. But shouldn't surprise us because look at this. We had a higher high. And then since then, momentum could not, could not follow oh. through. And once okay. we could hit this Fibonacci level, down we went. Okay. Um, any view on uh, 
couple copper stocks like Freeport and Southern Copper, SCCO. Do you know those That's issues? Everyone knows I, Freeport, I, I, of course. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think Freeport is is very close to the lows as well. Let me let me pull up the daily here. I think that's going to show something. So notice what's happening on the daily. Where is RSI? RSI. Not only are we double bottoming right now with positive divergence, so we had a lower lower low here, and we bounced with a hammer yesterday. Um, but also, RSI is exactly at the March lows. On, on the daily chart, right? And and I bet you if we take a look at, um, what was the other, CCCO? SCCO, Southern yeah. Copper. I, I certainly follow it uh, on my copper watch list. So that's a little bit stronger, which is great. You certainly want the, so I don't see a lower low here, but that's totally fine as well. I think I think this is gonna be a level where uh, it's it, it may very likely bottom as well. I, I have been following the copper on our weekly re uh, reviews, uh, copper miners, as well as uh, the price of copper. And I've been noticing there have been signs of bottoming. Um, and, and so, you know, you can't ever time a bottom perfectly, but I think we're pretty close. Here's, here's COPEX, the copper miners ETF. Again, right. we've got a lower price in, um, that was hit yesterday. Momentum did not confirm, which is what you want to see. And again, momentum is back at the levels of March 2020. You're not often going to find a, a situation where the price has consolidated very nicely, kind of a bullish flag, um, but momentum has completely sold off. And it's kind of recharged his batteries, and I think it's going to go um, sooner rather than later. Just an observation I have, because I follow a lot of the gold and silver miners that industrial commodities, like you're showing copper, uranium, um, have held up much better than the precious metal miners. Yeah. Any reason you know, for that? You know, the precious metals are, it's, it's such a complicated trade. It's, uh, it's well above my pay grade to try to understand that. I mean, ever since the Jerome Powell speech, uh, the expectations were uh, that gold was breaking out on almost every technical time frame and in June. And then he said failed. something yeah. and, and things, yeah. right. It was a failed breakout. And, I think we're, we're probably fairly close to the lows. I, I've seen a lot of uh, places, a lot of charts that say we're pretty close to support. I just don't don't see it yet. So I, okay. I wanted to build a base around these levels and, uh, and, and, and give me a little bit more conviction to go long, uh, back long uh, the precious metals. Gold has been holding on pretty strongly, but silver hasn't. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's concerning. Like you said, you, uh, you want to see kind of the, the more volatile name, names lead lead the metal. So uh, I want to see silver lead gold and I'm not seeing it right now. Yeah. Um, you won't see it for a while. Yeah. Okay. And, then and then finally, just want to touch on uh, dr uh, dry bulk shipping. We we've been speaking about it because I think it plays into the commodity narrative. Um, notice here as well, since, since uh, roughly May, we haven't been making a new high on, on the bulk dry shipping ETF, even though it was one of the best trades of the year, right. Um, from a low of, roughly $7 to a high of 30. Uh, then it sold off, tried to break out, couldn't do it, and down we went. But we've got this bullish wedge here, and it's, and it's starting to break out as well um, from that wedge. If it can be confirmed, that could be a good indication that essentially bulk shipping, which is, a, yeah. in my opinion, leading index for uh, you know, commo the commodity inflation trade. You see we've bottomed here um, yeah. the last couple of days at RSI support levels. Um, so let's see if there's some continuation over the next few days to confirm my thesis here. Okay. Um, have you ever taken a cruise on a dry bulk shipping ship? I'm not sure. Have, have you ever tried it? I mean, maybe you get good rates, especially with COVID and everything. Anyway. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I might take my wife uh, to Hawaii. On <laughs> uh, you want to show us one uranium chart, Dave, sure. before you sure. go? I mean, you know, your favorite, sure. your, your favorite so my, uranium chart. Okay. My, my favorite uranium stock continues to be Encore Energy um, due to a number of different factors. Uh, management being the the most most important, I think, to the success of a company. And notice how on, this is a stock that we've been, we, we've been buying since the last couple of years at ten cents, and now it hit a high of one sixty three. But again, momentum hit a high back in December, and it's been going down ever since. 
right? And momentum now, again, is um, extremely oversold and is back at the levels of where? March 2020. So, and yeah. we're, we happen to be at the base of that previous breakout um, starting in 2021. So we've retraced all the gains of 2021. And I think this is a, a major opportunity, major buy zone. Below this pink, this pink line is the 200 EMA. So below that level right now, I think if we get a reflexive rally, I think we can get a really big push to the upside sooner than later. And this is this applies across the board. I just like Encore due to its ma uh, management prudence. But Denison will do well if Encore does well. Energy Fuels is another name that has a lot of fundamental uh, reason to own it. But you know it's down 50% from its highs. So great opportunities, whether it's in uranium and copper, and I think soon enough in precious metals. But I'll I'll withhold judgment on that. For now. Okay. Well, you know another great uh, commodity stock review by you, Dave. Really appreciate you coming in and and showing us the levels. And uh, uh, I find it interesting how you look at, because um, I do a lot with RSI, RSI levels in a comparative way to other turning points before we started heading up. So the best way for people to follow you, Dave, is it on Twitter at Moneyology? Yeah, that's the best way. That's the way. Stay in touch with the community at Moneyology dot com um, or at moneyology moneyology.com is the website i'm not as active there i'm just too busy with life um but okay. at moneyology dot at moneyology on twitter is the best way to follow me and then you know you can follow me on patreon but twitter is really the way to go okay well thanks again dave my you're my trading warrior brother and uh i hope that the battle goes well for you until we talk again perhaps in the fall and uh, it's nice to see the market uh, sell off and give people a chance to buy things um, at maybe at least fair value, if not cheap, at least fair value. So um, some nice examples. And thank you for spending your most valuable currency, which is your time, uh, showing our community what you're thinking and different issues that you're interested in. I, it's we all it's very much a pleasure, Dale. I really appreciate the opportunity and okay. have a great day, everybody. Yeah, have a great summer trading season and let's talk again in the fall, Dave. Appreciate you to... being here. Take okay. care. Cheers. Follow Dave at Moneyology on Twitter. And, uh, you know, uh, that way you could keep up with the different issues and see if there's a, even a little more deeper pullback. We'll see what happens. I think a lot of it's going to be index driven. There you go. Dave put up his Twitter handle. And that's a wrap for Turnaround Tuesday, everybody. Uh, have a great day trading. You could join the team in 18 minutes on the morning edge. And don't forget to, you know, not just trade your, you know, be thankful for your stocks and your commodities and your currencies, but count your blessings too. And it's great to have Ryan as on the team and uh, we're only getting better. So uh, everyone have a great day. Adios, see you tomorrow. You're welcome, Anthony.